in part one of this series of videos, I told you what a very high up important source over MGM Plus has told me about the budget for the new Stargate series, why it's a revival and not a reboot. Now I'm going to be able to drop things like why Brad Wright isn't involved. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. So obviously the most important question I had was, is this going to be a revival and not a reboot? Oh, for the love of God, please no reboot. And he was able to confirm to me that yes, this will be a revival. It will be a Stargate SG-1 revival, more importantly. But what else? Well, for me, the second most important question I had to ask was, why is Brad Wright not involved? Now, I completely understood that this is going to be a very difficult question for this person to answer. For one, it was not their decision. I have to tell you now that this source, even though they are very involved in the Stargate revival, they're not the person making decisions. This isn't Jennifer Salky talking to me or anyone like that. So remember that with the answer. But they do have an interesting insight. Their answer. Honestly, this was never actually an option when planning. Anything is possible at a later stage, a consultant, writer or director, but showrunner, it's unlikely because of the business model of such a show. Production partner to develop the show is going to be important and whoever that production partner is will probably want to choose the showrunner or at very least be very involved in who that showrunner is. I asked about Penguin and a Parker, and could that showrunner be someone like Mark Fergus? He says, I cannot comment on specifics at this time. I will be able to tell you that there is a partner that we're working with, that a lot of the development work has been done with that partner, and that as soon as that can be announced, it will be. But right now, it's not been signed off. I assume by that he meant it's not been confirmed sort of contractually. So, would not confirm or deny that it's Penguin and a Parker, but I have to tell you guys from other sources, I've been told it's not, and that it is another partner. I've actually got a rough idea who this partner is, um, and as soon as I know a bit more, I make sure I'll let you know. So I wanted to ask, where are we right now? What is happening now? What is the plan? The plan is to go into development in the early summer, he told me. There are other factors that will affect exactly when. I asked, will studio space be a factor? If again, if you're a regular site tracker, you'll know that I've been talking about studio space for a very long time. Um, the Hackman Group, which is um, a partner of Amazon, are building several new studio and new sound stages. And Amazon will actually be renting several of them. Several of these sound studios are actually being built specifically for Amazon. I've actually been told more than once that a couple of those sound stages have already been earmarked for Stargate. So he said, yes, but also there are budgets, people's availability, studio space and other physical factors are probably the main and, and most important reasons, though, um, that will affect the schedule. There are lots of plates that need to be spinning at the same time. And these things can be very, very difficult to get straight um, for a specific date. So what's he saying there? Yes. OK, the studio space is important. You cannot produce a TV show unless you've got somewhere to do it. That's just obvious. And studio space, actually, particularly in the United States, is at a premium, even in Canada as well. And the Hackman Group is building vast new sets. For example, actually, um, the studios in Vancouver where the Stargate SG-1 and Atlantis were filmed are currently having a massive, I think it's um, $600 million investment in them. Um, a lot of the stuff with Paramount Plus right now is happening because companies want that studio space. It is incredibly valuable and at a premium. There are lots and lots of streaming services, TV shows, movies, etc., etc., being made right now, and they all are clamoring for that studio space. So, yeah, Amazon getting that space that they've been looking at for a while is a premium, and a lot of that space isn't going to be available until at least the summer, I'm being told. So I went on to ask him, how did you get to this point with Stargate? He basically said, look, I cannot go into specifics again, but broadly speaking, the plan for Stargate goes back 18 months. As you know, and 
we exclusively told everybody first, um, we were looking at a movie. That was the big idea. But the series was always going to follow it. If you have a franchisable IP and intellectual property like Stargate, it only makes sense to think big. And Stargate is already on so many platforms. I asked, like, the recent video games, you mean? He said, yes, but also merchandising and things even like your channel and other like it evidence that the franchise and the love for shows like this um, and the fan base for Stargate is there and desperately waiting for more. Or um, I asked, how much does Amazon really look at things like social media when trying to um, figure out how much interest there is in a show like Stargate? He said, all modern entertainment businesses are pretty much obsessed with it social media means because it is the new influence youtube videos can literally make or break a new show or movie what's trending is obviously a very keen barometer for interest and lots of effort is to put into making sure we have that data in a way that our can guide our decisions but at the same time studios will need creators to guide our decisions too it can't just be about the data even though that is obviously far more important than it was maybe a decade ago so what's he talking about social media and youtube has become far more influential in the last 10 years um when people just try and decide what they were going to go watch at the cinema a few years ago, they might see the trailer, they might see the adverts, they might read the movie critics review. But nowadays, the influence comes from your favourite YouTuber. Um, uh, online reviews, um, gossip and stories you read about. We have seen that that influence can destroy a project like it did almost destroy Rings of Power, but also how many movies and things as well. Now, I would argue that actually a lot of the time the YouTubers get it right. Some people would argue that the um, Ghostbusters with women a few years ago was attacked and destroyed by a toxic YouTube um, influence. I would actually argue that, yeah, OK, a lot of YouTubers jumped on it going, oh, they're women, they're women. And, you know, they were maybe saying more about their own bigotries than anything else but on the whole they were right because the movie was bloody awful so i would also argue that actually a lot of the um problems people raised about rings of power they had a point so i would say that on the whole youtube can be a very unpleasant place to go and the internet and social media as a whole can be but also a lot of the time if you look at the broader strokes and the generalizations that YouTube and the conclusions that YouTube comes to, they tend to get it right. So they've been looking at what people are saying. They are engaging with channels like Sidetrack to try and get ahead of that you know, maybe negativity. Because I actually think announcing Stargate and a revival of Stargate is going to be a big deal. And there will be a lot of people that are very concerned about it. So let's just hope that, you know, they know what they're doing in this respect. And from what this guy is telling me, they do seem to be at least thinking about this information, this data, and how this affects actually what their fans want. But at the same time, remembering that the creators are the people that actually then have to do it. It's no point just doing what the YouTube algorithms tell us. We need to trust the creators as well. So I said, 18 months or so, you've been um, working on Stargate. That's what he said. Do you have script or script or a story? He said, there are story ideas for the first season and a rough idea where phase one will go. I mean, what phase one? phase one obviously if you're going if you're a side tracker you'll know that over the last um particularly eight or nine months i've been hearing more and more rumors that this would be um looking at a an initial phase but what i'm actually being told by other people that work in the industry is that any new show they tend to look at a five-year plan initially and they tend to call that a phase um uh, but the idea here will be to do sort of a marvel-esque style um show which has maybe two or three different shows running at the same time that influence each other. You know, that's the, the, the modern fashionable way of doing these sort of franchises. Um, think Star Wars, Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian, other shows that are coming along as well. Again, 
that they influence each other. Um, think of them as like chapters in a book, though, moving towards a specific goal. That's what um, I think he's talking about here when he says phase one. So, yeah, he, but he did correct me a little bit. He said, don't get too excited by that. And then he smiled at me. We have sketched out an initial five-year plan that will include different media. I said, movie, TV shows. He said, yes, maybe graphic novels, more games. The idea is to use our partners to create something that can be shared and enjoyed in many different ways through different parts of MGM and Amazon. Now, I brought up here, so maybe like DVD sales, like the recent Babylon 5 movie release. He said, box bets and special editions, etc., are possible, but there's no definite plan for that right now that I'm aware of. So they are definitely looking at this from a business point of view, and so they should. At the end of the day, Amazon needs to make money with Stargate or they won't make it. I find it really interesting, though, that this isn't the first time I've heard about Amazon thinking about projects like this in a multi-format kind of way. Amazon is a business that can influence our lives in lots of different ways. They are very, very good at trying to not just sell us what we want, but tell us what we want in the first place and then sell it to us. Now, this would be um, an extension of that, that this won't just be about a TV series, a movie. It's also going to be very much about the merchandise, etc., uh, graphic novels, blah, 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 whatever, that Amazon will then sell us. DVD sales are not massively influential like they used to be. But if you get a DVD sale, something like the Babylon 5 movie, and put it in a nice box and a special edition and make a big deal out of it, there can still be significantly money that can be earned. They can still make really, really good money and then put it on Amazon Digital a little bit later because people still want that DVD box. They may never even watch it, but having it is important. Amazon understand that and they will, you know, really get money from every different aspect of the Stargate project when they get going. Interest Don't forget to get into the comments, though, and tell me any more questions you think you really want this guy to be asked. I'm going to be having a second meeting with him in the next two weeks or so. Um, that will be followed up eventually by a live video where he's going to agree to come on and actually talk directly to you and me. And basically, once all this has been officially announced by Amazon, he'll be able to do that. So get into the comments and tell me exactly what you want him to know. Also, don't forget, if you are new to the channel, to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss part three, where I'm going to be telling you more about the tone of the new Stargate show. Don't forget to go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack if you want to see the video premiere first. Um, and, you know, because it is there for a small contribution that really supports the channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon for part three.